Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. You know, my last video I talked about a uh, kerf offset, and it just stimulated a whole rash of messages that I got uh, asking about why my circles aren't circles, my squares aren't squares, my boxes don't fit in together, fit together, my box joints. And today we're going to talk about that just by running uh, a simple calibration in Lightburn. And I'm going to show you how to do these, how to calibrate your laser so that your circles are circles, your squares are squares. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my wood set up. I checked it on the camera. This is in the right spot. It's going to cut out of the top left corner. Um, the only thing that I've got left to do now is I need to just set my cut real quick. And this is basswood. Two millimeter cut go ahead and assign that to the layer and we're ready to run this job so I'm gonna run this job and cut out this 150 by 150 and then we're gonna go and measure it and make our adjustments so I'm just gonna come over here and hit start I've got everything turned on the air assist is on the machine is on we're ready to go laser is on air assist on focus set everything's good so I can just say yes and go ahead and run the job and there you can see it's cutting it out just fine I'm gonna leave this in real time and uh, if you're interested the cut settings are 600 speed 50% power that is the recommended settings for two millimeter basswood as you can see, it's hotter on the sides than it is going across the X. So the Y is a perfect cut through as compared to the X, which does a little more flashing. And it's almost finished, and we can go and take a look at our cutout and see what we got. Now there you can see the X is a little more flashing in the background. And we're finished. So let's go ahead and go over and measure it now and uh, see what we get. All right, here's our final product. Uh, let's go ahead and take it out. And what I'm going to do now is let me close this door. I can't turn off the uh, laser because then we won't be able to get to the actual settings so uh, what I'm going to do is move this camera up just a little bit like that and this is our final cut piece right here so I'm going to take my digital caliper I'm going to make sure that it zeroes properly and you really do need to have a good digital caliper to do this uh, I have my Harbor Freight one which isn't very accurate uh, so that's I like this one. I'll put a link down below if you're interested in seeing this one. But so I'm going to come out to the one 150, and this is what I do. So now I take six different measurements. So as you can see, I've got 149.73 there. I've got 149.64 here. 149.69 here so I just take 149.40 there just take six different measurements on the Y and then I flip it over and do the X and I really shouldn't do that uh, that was the X that I did okay so now I have to do the Y this way you have to keep the orientation proper as well so I've got 149.36, you can see they're pretty close, 149.62, 149.55. So I'm going to write down all of these measurements now, and I'm going to do an average of all of those measurements. I'm going to actually redo this off camera, write down all the measurements, and then use the averages to go ahead and set the curve or I, excuse me, to set the calibration. Okay, so here we go. Uh, here are the final results. 
on the Y, I came up with 149.71 as the average. And on the X, I came up with 149.55. So uh, that's actually very close. This is a, you know, factory default on this uh, Acer 20 watt. But let's go ahead and make this even better and fix this. So now in your case, you know, your numbers may be off. You may wind up with 149. You might be a whole full millimeter off in one direction or the other. So let's come up here to the top menu over here and let's click on edit and go to machine settings down here on the bottom. When we bring up the machine settings, you're going to see a function here called calibrate access. Access. Why do I keep saying access? <laughs> calibrate access. We're going to click on that. Now it's going to say calibration of axis X. What were you asking for? So requested distance. My requested distance was 150. And what did it produce? So now we're on the X. So I have to put in 149.55. And now you'll see the correction is being done down here. This is a queued change. So we're going to write this to the controller. So we're going to click write. And that is now done. And I always click write again. <laughs> Even though it says uh, it was done, I click write. Controller settings written successfully. Now I'm going to click calibrate axis one more time. This time I'm going to pull down and do the Y axis on it. My requested distance again is going to be the same at 150. And on the Y, I got 149.7. One. So I'll put that in here, 149.71, and there is our change. I'm going to hit right, and then I'm going to hit right one more time. So it says controller settings written successfully. What I can do now is save these controller settings just so that I have a backup of the file. I would hit save and go to my drive that has, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'll do that offline, but just go ahead and save your controller settings so that you have them for the future uh, in case you switch computers or something like that. So now we can say OK and we're going to run this job one more time. So let me go load some new material into the laser and run this job again and look at the results. Alright, so here are the results of the second cut test. As you can see, I've got 150.09, 150.10, 150.11 on the Y, which works out to 150.01. I just did it three times this time because I knew it would be more accurate than the first test. And then on the X, I also came very close, 150.03. So that was the average of all three of those. And now I know that I am close enough uh, <laughs> to run accurate jobs. So this makes me feel very comfortable that I'm close enough. I could go back into the machine settings and put these numbers in and calibrate it one more time. And I probably will. Um, but you know, this, this is close enough for government work as far as I'm concerned here. And I think we've got, uh, probably as close to accurate as we're going to get. And keep in mind that your focus has a lot to do with this as well. Uh, those little uh, tenths and hundredths that it's off. So uh, if your focus is not perfect, then your measurements are not going to be perfect. So uh, you don't want to refocus the machine while you're doing this test or change any of the variables that are involved. All right, so a lot of people are probably thinking, well, why do I need to do this? Uh, mine is pretty close. What's the difference between, you know, 149.6 and 150? Well, there's no difference if you're cutting a, a square that's this big. But if you're cutting something that might be the size of your work bed, that little, uh, you know, point whatever that it's off gets exponentially larger the bigger that you go. So if you have, like, for instance, a 400 by 400 work area, 
and let's say you want to cut something that's 17 inches across well by the time you reach that 17 inches you know that that half of a millimeter that it's off turns into a much bigger number and if you're putting parts together if you're uh, doing modeling or anything like that you're going to notice that difference and you're going to have to compensate for it um, maybe by shaving down some pieces of the wood to get it to fit together and you really don't want to do any of that the a cnc um, control board is capable of following your commands combining this with my last video with the the uh kerf well you know you're right out the gate you're not going to be able to do a 150 by 150 square or 100 by 100 square because of the kerf so it is a good idea on every machine to run this calibration test i mean you saw it doesn't take long very very simple to do you know uh just cutting a a square marking it down so this is the first one that i did and I got 149.71 on the Y, and I got 149.55 on, on the X. Now, and that's the average of all these numbers. And the, taking the average is important as well, um, because it does, it does change as it moves with the grain and things like that. So the average is going to give you a more accurate number. But um, now, on this one here, it seems, if you put them side by side... They seem to be exactly the same size on top of each other, but they're really not because this one here was adjusted and this one is exactly, I say exactly, 150.01 .01 by 150.03. So that in, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's 150 millimeters. I could go back again and readjust these numbers and recalibrate one more time and cut another square and probably get that both of them down to 150.01 .01 just by redoing the x um, so you know you can you can get really precision cuts using any laser as long as you have your your axes your axes <laughs> i just have such a hard time with with that word as long as you have your axes calibrated properly you can get 100% accurate cuts. And we're not talking about doing a four foot by eight foot, you know, bed laser here. We're talking about a regular hobby laser, CO2 laser, you know, something that's, that's not uh, a sheet laser. So uh, the sheet lasers, you absolutely have to be, have to have 100% calibration. And of course, you know, there are other things too uh, on your CO2, your backlash. Some manufacturers set a, a backlash number on it that you know throws throws these numbers off so uh, check in your controller and see what your backlash is it should be set to zero um, now mine came set to 0 0.02 and which kind of puzzled me I don't know why it was set that way but that's the way it was set 0 0.02 on the Ruida so I actually wound up resetting that to 0 0.00 and running my calibration uh, test and making the adjustments in Lightburn which I think is, is the best way to do it. We're designing in Lightburn. Uh, you know, it should be calibrated for Lightburn. Now let's talk about for a minute about the other factors that are involved here, such as on your diode laser, your eccentric nuts, as an example. I know a lot of people don't understand what an eccentric nut is. So let's cover that real quickly. Uh, eccentric nut is basically when you turn the nut, on the other side of that nut there's a circle a piece of metal and it's thicker on one side and thinner on the other side so as you turn it it puts pressure up against the plate that holds that wheel gusset in place and the, as you turn it it'll get tighter and because that thicker part will come up and it'll tighten it up so that it doesn't wobble and then if you keep turning it, it'll get, you'll get to the thinner part and it'll get loose again. So you can turn it forever and it'll get tighter, looser, tighter, looser as you go around. So, um, you know, that a lot of people don't understand that. So you have, when you adjust that eccentric nut, 
you've got to turn it and and try and wobble the uh, housing as you go. And when, as soon as the wobble stops, that's where you stop turning that nut. Because if you keep turning it, it's going to start wobbling again. So that's that's one thing are the eccentric nuts. So before you do these tests, you want to make sure that your eccentric nuts are adjusted properly. And then on all lasers, make sure that your belts are adjusted properly. And uh, make sure that, uh, especially on diodes, that your frame is square. You know, run a square test, get a regular framing square, put it in the corners. Make, so you got to have a, a square frame, you got to have adjusted belts, you have to have adjusted eccentric nuts before you can even start this test. Real easy uh, calibration to do on your laser. Very simple, uh, nothing complicated about this. Anyone can do it if you just follow the steps step by step. And I, you know, I guarantee you that uh, if you want your, your boxes to come out boxes, and to be perfectly lined up on the joints, then you're, you're gonna need to calibrate your laser. That's all there is to it. Do this calibration test on all of your lasers when you first get it, and you want to also do the calibration test on a regular basis. So if you do like a, a semi-annual adjusting and cleaning and all that kind of stuff, do your calibration test at the same time. Because with lasers, all lasers, whether it's CO2 or diode, uh, you're going to have some variations over time and use. And the reason why you get those variations is because you have your timing gear teeth and you have your, especially if you're using bi-directional scan, and you have your uh, timing belts. And what happens is when it scans to the right and then turns direction, you get a little bit of belt climb on those teeth which uh, wears the belt. And then of course the belt stretches and anytime you adjust your belts, you're gonna need to recalibrate your laser. You have to compensate for, on a regular basis, you have to check this for uh, belt wear, for uh, belt climb, you know, where the, the teeth take away some of the material on the actual uh, timing belts themselves, on CO2 lasers for the backlash. There, there are several reasons why you have to do this and uh, it's something that should be done on a regular basis. Incorporate this as part of your regular maintenance. And on some users, if you're doing this as a business and you're running a lot of projects, I would suggest that running this test on a monthly basis to make sure that all of your projects are going to be 100% accurate. Um, so remember, a CNC machine is capable of 100% accuracy. So why not make sure that your projects are 100% to scale? So anyway, I hope you learned something from this video today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And as always, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.